just wonder about um, what's known about deposition in the lung. Um, do you know where they go? How deep these fibers go? The nanoparticles that I that I sh were showing you here, the, or the nano the nanotubes. Lots known about spheres and where in the lungs they deposit, but I was. We've been looking all over the place for in terms of trying to find out where they go. Um, you find them on the epithelial surface, deep in the alveoli of the lung, which is a very distal lung. Uh, uh, as I mentioned, the majority of them you will find are taken up by macrophages. They get very concentrated in macrophages, and they're very easy to see even by light microscopy. Uh, so far as I uh, can tell, they, they have not gotten into the circulation. If you can look at cross sections of small vessels and capillaries, the lung is rich in, you know, the lung is uh, incredibly vascularized, uh, but I have not seen any of these nanotubes in the lumen of vessels. Uh, I, I was sort of surprised at that because I have heard of accounts where they are taken up into the circulation. I'm not saying they're not, I just haven't seen them. Um, we're looking for them at the pleura. That's very diff difficult because the pleura is a huge expanse. We do see a lot of macrophages that are right up under the pleura, so they're very close. Um, so they, they move around a lot in the lung. Do they get outside the lung? I don't know. Yes? I'm sorry. This is <coughs> just a factual sort of informational question I was hoping you could help me with. And I don't know if it's possible to go back to the chart where you, near the end where you were showing the two options, one went to sort of fibrosis and the other went to cancer, um, depending on um, sort of, I think you used the analogy to whether they escaped the uh, catcher's mitt or... Um, oh, yeah. That sort one of, of my yeah, last that ones last here. One, exactly. Um, okay. and, I, you know, don't understand this stuff super well. I was hoping you could help me understand. Um, so I think I have a, a decent sense of, you know, you were talking a lot about the macrophages and, um, you know, how the macrophages will carry the particles up. But I didn't have as good a sense if they, if it doesn't get captured by the macrophages, um, where it goes with the, with the translocation. I didn't have a good sense of where the mesothelium is. Can you sort of help a, oh, an see. ignorant uh, non-scientist understand yep, what's absolutely. happening there? So the, the mesothelial cells, the mesothelium, is the lining of the outer lung, oh, okay. right? That, that, those are called mesothelial cells. That's the only type of cell found on the very outer lung. Okay. Now, there's also mesothelial cell lining on the inside of the thoracic cavity. There's also mesothelial cells on the inside of the, uh, the abdominal wall as well. That's why the Donaldson group used that surrogate assay. Okay. For some reason, the mesothelial cells are exquisitely sensitive to being irritated by fibers more so than other cells. And that's why mesothelioma is really only found with asbestos fibers. So how do they get there? Well, if they're like asbestos fibers, they can be, they're very active in terms of moving around in the lung. Uh, the cells actually help them, not just the macrophages, but other cell types. It's not quite known how that works, but the actin cytoskeleton can you know, carry things along. And they will get translocated eventually out to the pleura. So I imagine carbon nanotubes are, are getting uh, translocated to the pleura as well. Uh, do, they, do they get to other places like the circulation? They would have to go across both that um, epithelial barrier I was showing you. If I can find this quickly. I'll show you the barrier they'd have to go through. If they get translocated to the circulation, oops, here we go. Um, this is probably a red blood cell uh, occluding this very small capillary, so that's the side of a capillary. They'd have to go through uh, two different types of cells. One is the epithelium itself, and then there's an endothelial cell that, that uh, is forming the vessel. So they have to go through two different types of cells, two different basement membranes. It's easy for gases like oxygen and CO2 to do that because it's a very short distance, and that's why the lung is so beautiful in the way it works. Something physical, a structure like this, may have a hard time doing that. Maybe not. Depends on how well it can get through. Nanoparticles would likely do that much, do that much easier. 
I think if you, if you also uh, remember one of the ones that I showed you on, on macrophages, there is um, something that was, um, I won't go back. It looked like the, um, some of the nanotubes were actually getting into the, the nucleus past the nuclear membrane, which is unusual, where it could cause DNA damage. Thanks. Yes. You know, the, the macrophages is, uh, is interesting. You, you said that, um, that they work their way up the little escalator and then are, are swallowed. So um, just following kind of the life history of a macrophage that has some of these um, uh, nanotubes in them, once it's swallowed, then I suppose I'm branching over now into like a, 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 a gastroenterologist's domain, but are the, are the same, I mean, when, when does it pass from like, you know, Okay, it's out of my hands. Now it's in the, now you know, in the gut. Once it once it goes, or even in the esophagus. I mean, do they do they deposit in the esophagus? Uh, are there studies that, that that trace? And then what becomes of the microbiome? Is it digested? Does it dissolve? As far as I know, no one knows. Okay. I mean, with particles in general, they're swallowed and they're expelled. So they're, yeah. With nanotubes, I don't know if they would be taken back up or any other nanoparticle through the intestinal villi. Mm -hmm. uh, and back into the bloodstream where they just keep circulating yeah. around the body like that. Yeah. I would guess not, but it is possible. Well, it just seems like the, the, so that the, there's a bridge somewhere between the trachea and the esophagus where these guys are coming up and then dropping down into the other, and it seems like that would be a locus of, a potential locus, like a bottleneck, if you will, that if there was going to be a concentration, it seems like it, it could be, although you're constantly swallowing. So if they're going up the trachea and then into the pharynx and then down the esophagus, that's a very thick area where it would be very difficult to get back into the bloodstream. It would be much more likely that they would get back into the bloodstream in the intestine oh, where there's uh, more of a collection of capillaries again. Yeah, okay. Yeah, Tara. It's just more a comment, if you want to comment on it. I just want to bring up another point uh, related to what we were discussing before about comparing carbon nanotubes to something like asbestos. And, right. you know, another important reason toxicologists do this is because we're talking about endpoint effects that have a very long latency period. So mm -hmm. if you're looking at something like asbestos, you have an exposure and that takes 20 or 30 or more years till you see fibrosis, till you see mm -hmm. cancer. So understanding similarities between these agents that do these things over a long period of time, so we don't want to wait 20 or 30 years to see if people are going to get these diseases, but we want to sort of look at comparisons early on following exposure and see if there are similarities that could help us maybe predict. That's an excellent point. Things. I'm glad you brought that up, too. Uh, it's, um, it's an epi data. We may not see anything. Yeah, you may not see anything if, if they are like asbestos fibers, they being carbon nanotubes or multi-wall carbon nanotubes. Um, you're right. You may not see any uh, lung diseases for years to come. But you can use, again, a surrogate system experimentally would be mice. They only live to be two years old rather than 80, so you'll find out more quickly. Okay.